With Kevin Smith's new film out in theaters, Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, he has now directed 13 films, so it is time to rank his films from worst to best. Hey everybody, my name is Justin. I love to watch movies. If you guys love to watch movies too, you guys are in the right spot. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Click that bell notification for more up and coming videos. Today we're going to be ranking all of the Kevin Smith movies, all 13 of his movies. He has enjoyed a lengthy career and he's had a bit of an up and down career. He stuck to a certain universe where all of his characters kind of were the same in his early films like Mallrats and Clerks and Clerks 2. And then he kind of went off and did some other things like Tusk and Yoga Hosers and Red State. So he has a wide variety of films for people to enjoy. Um, I think Kevin Smith is a really good director and so I'm excited to talk about his films. If you guys have seen all of his movies, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about all those movies and how you would rank all 13 and have you seen the new one Jay and Silent Bob reboot. So with that, let's get this video started with the number 13 coming in at last place, and that is Yoga Hosers. I just watched Yoga Hosers for the first time the other day, and this is a lazy movie. It's such an odd movie about two girls named Colleen. Uh, one is played by Johnny Depp's daughter, and the other one is played by Kevin Smith's daughter. And they have to fight off against a horde of little tiny Nazi sausages. Um, it's a really zany movie that uh, seems like it's going in different routes at times and it doesn't really ever make sense to me. It's just a bizarre movie. Um, it's never really boring. It's a, a weird idea that I think was half-baked and uh, didn't really amount to much in the end. Um, I think that it was a decent watch, but as... All of the other Kevin Smith movies, I think Yoga Hosers is the worst one. Coming at number 12 is Tusk. Tusk is one of the rare films that really, really disturbs me. I really didn't know what this movie was about, and I didn't see any of the images before seeing it in theaters. And uh, not it's, a, it's been out for a while, so spoiler. Uh, Justin Long gets turned into a walrus, and it is absolutely terrifying. But besides that, with the, the creepy images and just can't get it out of my head ever, I don't think this movie works as well as this bizarre zany idea wants it to be. This is based on an episode of Kevin Smith's podcast, and it's a weird movie, but it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder as the movie goes along. And I think that it forgets to try to tell a story it just focuses on being weird. Uh, Tusk, though, is a movie that I could not get out of my mind. Um, every time I think of a Kevin Smith movie, and they reference a lot in Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, I go to those images, those just really disturbing, oh my gosh, images of Justin Long as a walrus. Uh, I think it's one of the few movies that really just disturbs me and gets underneath my skin. And I don't know if you guys can relate at all, but Tusk is just such an odd, weird movie. I think that as it just goes along and increasing it gets weirder and weirder and it's a little excessive at times but um, it's not one of my favorite Kevin Smith movies. Coming in at number 11 is Cop Out. Now Kevin Smith does not like Cop Out and that's proven to be in the Jay and Silent Bob reboots. They talk a lot about Cop Out. Uh, this is an action comedy that seems to be lacking action and it seems to be lacking comedy. Bruce Willis and um, Tracy Morgan really don't seem like characters in this movie uh, they're not really that realistic and it doesn't lead and it leads to a really bad chemistry amongst the two the movie not being funny this is the film that Kevin Smith did not write but he did direct this movie and uh, it's just overall a pretty bad movie it's one of his lowest scores on Rotten Tomatoes and I can see why it's just a dull unfunny not very much action movie that I did not find that I found to be really far off from other Kevin Smith movies. Coming at number 10 is Jersey Girl, which stars Ben Affleck. And this is where Kevin Smith tries to be more friendly and tries to have a film that can reach a wide audience compared to Clerks and Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back and Mallrats. He tries to reach a different audience with Jersey Girl. 
He's attempting a rom-com about Ben Affleck, who's a widowed single father who tries to get back into the dating game. And I feel like the intentions are in the right spot for Jersey Girl. It wants to be a heartwarming rom-com and it has all the right elements. With his first attempt at this rom-com, I think that he tries a little too hard at times to make this like a decent rom-com. It's not a bad movie. Like I said, the intentions are right. It's a heartwarming movie at times. Ben Affleck is good in the movie. But compared to other movies that Kevin Smith has done, it's not that memorable. It tries too hard to be romantic at times. I think it comes off a little bit awkward. But I do think that Jersey Girl is a decent watch. If you are into Kevin Smith movies, you want to see something a little bit different from him, I would recommend checking out Jersey Girl. Coming at number nine is Red State, the first non-comedy movie that Kevin Smith has directed. Red State is a thriller that has some horror elements in it as well. This movie has a lot of action. It really catches you right away in the beginning. But unfortunately, Red State does feel a little bit repetitive at times. And the end climax doesn't seem to be that satisfying. I think it's a little bit disappointing. But overall, Red State is a different film from Kevin Smith. And I was excited to see this movie after watching Clerks 2 and Mallrats and all the other ones that he's done. I wanted to see him do a little bit something. I wanted to see him do something a little bit different, kind of like Jersey Girl. But Red State uh, has its thrilling moments. The action scenes are good, um, but I think that is a bit repetitive as well as the ending is not that satisfying. Coming in at number eight is Zack and Miri make a porno. This was the first movie I saw when I turned seventeen, and I was allowed to go see an R-rated movie by myself. Um, I love Zack and Miri makes a porno. It's such a fun film. Um, it's a movie that Kevin Smith is able to balance previous movies that he's done. He's able to balance those raunchy moments that he's used to as well as a heartwarming story like he did in Jersey Girl. So he's able to balance both of that. Seth Rogen and Elizabeth Banks have really good chemistry in the movie. Um, they provide a lot of those heartwarming moments as well. And then you have a really good supporting cast, which is able to provide some of those raunchier moments. So I do like those balance of um, heart and comedy. And I like the fact that movie theaters weren't allowed to actually have the name. It was just Zack and Miri. But I knew it as Zack and Miri makes a porno. It's a fun film. has a lot of memorable scenes. But I like that balance that Kevin Smith found in this movie. Coming at number seven is Mallrats. This is a follow-up to Clerks, which was Kevin Smith's first film. And Mallrats is similar to Clerks in a way, but I think that it lacks that charm that Clerks had. While Kevin Smith directed Clerks with maxing out his credit cards, this one had much more of a budget. And it's kind of similar, you know, Clerks had people talking at a convenience store. This one's just people talking at a mall. And I think this movie lacks um, some of the interesting characters that uh, Clerks had. I know this is like his follow-up to that movie. I do enjoy watching Mallrats for the Stan Lee cameo. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob are in the movie. I think it is a decent watch, but it does lack that charm that I was expecting when watching Mallrats right after watching Clerks. I didn't watch them when they were first released. I watched them when I was a little bit older, but watching Clerks first and then watching Mallrats, I kind of expected something but Mallrats is a good film. I think it is filled with a lot of fun characters, but um, it's a movie that I think lacks a certain charm and a certain, I guess, um, involvement from some of the characters where a lot of the dialogue from Clerks was f flowed, flowed very well. And here um, at times, it does seem like it flows very well, but at times it seems a bit forced as well. Coming at number six is Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. This is his most recent film. I just saw this in theaters, and it's a lot of fun. It's very meta. It pokes a lot of fun at Cop Out and Yoga Hosers and um, Funko Pops and Mighty from Power Rangers and just pop culture in general. There's a large, large, large amount of cameos in this movie, and I think that this movie is a lot of fun. Jason Mewes does a lot in this movie, providing those comedic moments as Jay, but also having some heartwarming moments as well. 
while trying to be a father. So there's that good balance. I think a lot of it is enjoyable. It is a road trip movie just like Strikes Back and Jay and Silent Bob are good in the movie. And I think that this movie was a great return for these characters. While also another good Kevin Smith directed film. Coming at number five is Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy really surprised me. And there's a really heartwarming moment at the end of Jay and Silent Bob reboot that talks a lot about Chasing Amy and what that meant to Ben Affleck as well as the other cast members that were in that movie. This movie is about a comic book artist who falls in love with a girl only to find out that she is a lesbian. This movie talks a lot about sexual identity and relationships. Kevin Smith really directs this film very well and allows for his actors and actresses in the movie to kind of take over to provide a lot of good dialogue, some really touching moments throughout this movie. Um, a lot of characters that Kevin Smith has worked with before were introduced in this movie and they played key moments in this movie as well as other movies that Kevin Smith has done. So it's kind of like a setup for certain universe that Kevin Smith has created. Chasing Amy's story seems like it could be a very mediocre movie, but it has a lot of heart. It has some good comedy. Great acting from the cast and a really good directing style from Kevin Smith. Coming in at number four is Dogma. I think one of Kevin Smith's most ambitious movies to date. This movie is about two fallen angels who try to get back into heaven after finding a loophole. But after discovering this loophole, but by discovering this loophole would prove that God is not real. This movie sparked a lot of protests. My friend who lived in New Jersey when he was younger, said that he saw a lot of people trying to protest dogma. I think this had a big impact at the time that it was released. It touches on religion, but in a comical way, but also understands what religion is and what it means to people. Alan Moore set as God, perfect. Alan Rickman is in the movie. George Carlin is in the movie. Uh, there's a lot of people, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Chris Rock. This movie has a good cast in it. Um, it understands religion, but shines some comical light on it. Um, it is a very interesting story, and I can understand why people would want to protest this movie. Um, I'm not religious at all, so I don't have a stance on this movie. I remember watching it in college and thinking this was such an interesting film um, that was funny, but also a bit touching as well. Coming at number three is Clerks 2. I remember watching a lot of Clerks 2 when I was in middle school, not knowing much about all of Kevin Smith's previous directed movies. I think at that time I only saw Mallrats and um, Clerks. And so Clerks 2 is obviously the follow up to Clerks and um, it's a bit different because it's not in black and white anymore and it doesn't take place at a convenience store. Instead it takes place at a fast food restaurant. I remember watching this movie a lot and thinking Wow, it's really funny. It's really vulgar. I don't understand some of these jokes. But there's also some surprising emotional, deep, deep emotional moments towards the end of the film that Kevin Smith brought on that felt needed for this movie. Um, throughout the movie, there's this progression that would lead to those emotional moments at the end of the movie, mainly from our main character with Rosario Dawson. So the movie is funny. And there's some comedic moments from Jay and Silent Bob. The cast is all around really good. There's a lot of great conversation about pop culture and relationships. But it does lead to that emotional end, which I think in the mid-2000s, Kevin Smith was able to do really well with Chasing Amy and Jersey Girl and with Clerks 2 and Zack and Miri Make a Porno. He was able to really balance those comedic moments as well as those emotional moments, which I think certain previous films were lacking. They were still really good films. They still had some great, great, they still had some great comedic moments, but with Clerks 2 and understood the characters, um, everyday life, but also had a lot of emotional moments, which made this film sit where it is. Coming in at number two is Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. Simply put, this is a really funny film. Jay and Silent Bob are iconic characters. They have a really good relationship. Kevin Smith is able to say a lot without actually speaking. Jay is vulgar and he's really silly and I love his humor from Jason Mewes. This movie had a good supporting cast, a good road trip movie. Um, all around, this is a very, very entertaining film. 
But coming in at number one is Clerks. Clerks is such an easygoing, very nicely flowed movie. Shot in black and white because it was cheaper. He maxed out a bunch of credit cards. The convenience store that he worked at couldn't shoot during the day, so he shot at night. Um, just a lot of great conversations that flow. This is a very indie film, and it skyrocketed Kevin Smith to what we know him as now. Clerks is just such um, a fun movie to watch. It's a simple movie. Uh, the conversations just flow very well. The cast in here is great. Uh, they are at their best in Clerks. Um, some funny moments from Jay and Silent Bob in this movie. We get the introduction of them in the movie. It's a very simple film that a lot of effort and a lot of heart and a lot of love went into making it a really good film. And it was praised when it was first released. It still stands up against the test of time. It's a film that I love watching. I love watching for the easy conversations, the relationships, the love going into it, the simple directing from Kevin Smith. It all turns into a really, really good film. It's easily Kevin Smith's best directed film and a film that I think um, not only is it a good Kevin Smith movie, it's also just a good film in general. Um, one of my favorite comedies of all time. Clerks is so good. I highly recommend checking out Clerks as well as all the other Kevin Smith movies if you have not seen much of his films. So there you guys have it. All 13 Kevin Smith movies ranked worst to best. He has a wide variety of films from Tusk and Red State, kind of like those horror films, as some rom-coms like uh, Jersey Girl, as well as some simple comedies like Jay and Silent Bob and Clerks. So he's got a good amount of movies for everybody to enjoy. Uh, not kids. No kids would enjoy his movies. But uh, Kevin Smith is a great director, and I'm so happy he's still making movies today. How would you rank all 13 Kevin Smith movies? Let me know in the comments section down below and watch my Jay and Silent Bob reboot review. It's on my channel now. My name is Just Watch Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.